The next item of business is a member's business debate on motion 5016 in the name of Jackie Bailey on Vale of Leaven Hospital GP out of our services. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Can those members who wish to speak in the debate please press the request to speak buttons now? And I call on Jackie Bailey to open the debate seven minutes or thereabouts. Ms Bailey, thank you. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer, and I welcome the opportunity to discuss the future of GP out of hours services in NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde. I will, of course, focus my attention on the cuts proposed at the Vale of Leven Hospital, but I am sure other members will want to speak about the out of hours services in their own area. Because make no mistake, this is an NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde wide plan to cut back access to GP out of hours services. According to their recommendations in a paper sent to all health and social care partnerships in the Greater Glasgow and Clyde area, the services at the Vale of Leven Hospital, Greenock Health Centre and Inverclyde Royal Hospital will be closed between Mondays and Fridays in the evenings and overnight. This will leave just five GP out of hours centres covering the whole of Greater Glasgow and Clyde during the week, putting even more pressure on NHS staff and causing some considerable concern for patients. The Health Board argues that the cuts are necessary due to staff shortages and financial pressure on NHS budgets. Those staff shortages have in part arisen due to the reduction in medical training places made by the current government. Since the beginning of the year, we've seen services withdrawn for hours at a time at the Vale of Leven Hospital on at least eight occasions with absolutely no notice given. Patients who have been sitting in the waiting room have been handed letters telling them that there's no doctor available to see them and they need to go to Paisley. The irony is that the vast majority of temporary closures at the Vale of Leven's out-of-hours service have happened during the weekend. Yet the Health Board wants to access the service during the week when they appear to have less difficulty filling staff rotors. So what happens if the cuts go ahead? but the health boards still don't have enough staff to run the out-of-hours service on a Saturday or Sunday. And if they were so concerned about staffing, why did the health board stop trainees doing shifts, something that is allowed to continue in Glasgow, but not at the Vale? Local GPs believe that it's only a matter of time before the service is completely removed. Do you know, there's been no consultation on the proposed changes. The Health Board have issued empty reassurances via the local media, while behind the scenes its officials send out papers to the Health and Social Care Partnership recommending cuts to the service. Just ask the local GPs in Dumbarton, Vale of Leven or Helensborough, who met with me and hospital campaigners last Friday. They are furious about the lack of engagement. Not only have they not been invited to share their unique insight to the needs of local patients, they weren't even informed about the proposals. One of the GPs in my area find, found out about the proposed cuts on Facebook, not from the health board, but on Facebook. Family doctors should be at the forefront of shaping local primary care services, but NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde simply treats them as an afterthought. Local GPs are responsible for the care of around 75,000 patients across the entire catchment area of the Vale of Leven Hospital. They've issued a unanimous statement condemning the proposals, and let me quote from it. Because in their words, they say that it constitutes an unacceptable clinical risk which will be felt most by disadvantaged patients, thereby widening health inequality and goes against both government and NHS Scotland advice. They made the point very clearly that GP out of hours is a core service which should be both local and accessible. It's not a specialised service. There's no clinical argument in favour of centralisation. And indeed, the GPs have said quite clearly that patient safety is at risk if these proposals go ahead. Emergency primary care is one of the most basic components of any local healthcare provision and it should be protected. And let me tell you about the practical implications for patients in the Vale if the service is centralised in Paisley. This is one example. I was told about a woman with a heart condition who turned up recently at the Vale on one of the evenings when the out-of-hours service was closed due to staff shortages. When she was told that she would have to make the 34-mile round trip to Paisley to see a doctor, she decided to go home and wait until her local surgery reopened in the morning. Thankfully, in this case, her condition improved, but it could have been very, 
very different indeed. This example highlights how vital it is to protect access to local out-of-hours care. If the service is withdrawn permanently, many people from Dumbarton, Vale of Leven and Helensburgh, especially those without a car, will simply not be able to see a GP in an emergency. And they might not see a GP at all because they don't want to bother anybody. And my local GPs firmly believe that patients' lives will be put at risk. The Health Board's own analysis of the footfall at out-of-hours centres shows that the service at the Vale of Leven Hospital is well used. Dumbarton and Alexandria have the highest share of out-of-hours attendances of any postcode area in the whole of Greater Glasgow and Clyde. Yet, predictably, the Health Board singles out the Vale of Leven Hospital for cuts once again. There are over 120 patients on average in my constituency use the service on Mondays to Fridays and they would be forced to travel to Paisley. Patients in Helensburgh, remote communities on the Roseneath Peninsula, in Arica, would face even longer journeys if the service is centralised. And local GPs estimate that this would lead to in excess of 500,000 miles of travel annually for Helensburgh patients alone. In Western Bartonshire, we have some of the most deprived communities in Scotland and the lowest rates of car ownership. The last bus from the Vale to the RAH leaves at 10 minutes past six. The patient transport service doesn't have the capacity to offer transport with, within one or even two hours. The poorest patients would be hardest hit and they would effectively lose access to emergency primary care. Whatever happened to the mantra of prevention and early treatment? Because if these proposals go ahead, patients will self-refer and end up in the wrong place at the front door of A&E, further increasing waiting times. The provision of GP out-of-hours services was a key commitment in the vision for the Vale Agreement signed by Nicola Sturgeon when she was Health Secretary. And I welcome the Vale vision back in 2009 because it offered stability and promised to retain a range of services at my local hospital. However, in recent years, the Health Board has started ripping up those promises. Maternity services under review, wards closed, haematology and a host of other clinics cut, 113 fewer nurses and midwives, bed numbers slashed by a third, and now even the most basic local service is under threat. Presiding officer, every time I raise the veil of leaving hospital in this chamber, the minister, the cabinet secretary, the first minister, they all tell me that they're committed to the vision for the veil. But if that's the case, why has not one SNP MSP signed my motion this evening? Not even Stuart McMillan, whose constituents in Greenock and Inverclyde will be directly affected. And the message really isn't understood by the health board either. Because if the health secretary is serious about the vision for the veil, and I believe she and her minister both are, then will they tell the health board to take the cuts off the table? and I hope to hear from her when she sums up this evening. Presiding officer, out of hours is a basic service. It's not specialist. It doesn't benefit from centralization. If you remove it, you're putting patients at risk. Not my words, but the words of local GPs. On Thursday afternoon after FMQs, I have the pleasure of welcoming a delegation of local activists from the Hospital Watch campaign to the parliament. Their recent demonstration at the Vale of Leven Hospital was a huge success with over 5,000 people attending. Hopefully on Thursday, they will get the opportunity to meet the cabinet secretary, to meet ministers, and I encourage colleagues from all parties to join us at 1 p.m. in committee room four. The message we want to convey is clear. Stop the cuts, protect local services. Thank you. I call Stuart McMillan to be followed by Morris Corey. Mr McMillan, please. Thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. Presiding Officer, Jackie Bailey has raised uh, many issues in her contribution, and some of which, uh, a lot of which actually, that I, uh, I can agree with, and we can find common ground. Uh, the issue before us today, though, obviously highlights the issue of the out of hours GP services. Previously, as a regional MSP, there were occasions where I highlighted issues on behalf of constituents regarding service delivery, but also regarding the future of the, the Vale of Leven Hospital and services in the, uh, uh, in the Dumbarton uh, constituency. The vision uh, for the Vale document that, uh, that Jackie Bailey uh, touched upon, the vision for the Vale document was published in 2010 and, and inpatient and day case activity has increased by a third in that time. We should also remember, however, 
that it was this government that actually ended the decade of damaging uncertainty by delivering the vision for the Vale under the previous Labour Liberal Democrat administration in which Jackie Bailey served as a minister, the Vale's e and &E was closed in 2002. Also, presiding officer, the, the number of acute beds reduced in, ev in every year of the Labour-led uh, Scottish executive. Now, I highlight these points for a reason, because health service delivery is changing. Now, the pulling together, uh, transforming urgent care for the people of Scotland report, uh, which, which is published in November 2015, highlights uh, the need to think anew about what is best for both urgent care for the people of Scotland and that this would require transformational change across many sectors. Now, this isn't easy, and I have raised concerns about proposals that have come forward regarding Inverclyde Royal Hospital, both publicly and also in correspondence with the Cabinet Secretary and also the Health Board, and I will continue to do so. The tactic that I don't deploy is to run to the press for a story before I have all the information, and I'm not accusing Ms Bailey of doing that. But I am aware of this review, which clearly affects uh, the Inverclyde area, and also that's why I wrote to the Chief Executive of the Health Board on the 10th of May. I asked some questions regarding access to public transport due to the public transport not always being available during these hours and the cost of a taxi to Paisley from Inverclyde will be prohibitive for many of my constituents. Uh, Jackie Bailey I think, used the phrase uh, of that the poorest patients will be the hardest hit and that's certainly something that uh, I absolutely agree with her on. I also raised the question regarding a company travel and the unsociable hours if needing to use the service. And thirdly, I raised the question regarding patient safety and care and also the long-term future of the service. Now, I know that the review is taking place and the reply from the, the Health Board in last week's Greenwich Telegraph uh, in reply to someone else raising the issue it was extremely informative. In it, uh, they say, uh, this review being led by the Health and Social Care Partnerships is considering how we can, we can continue to provide an efficient, responsive GP service out of hours that is sustainable in the long term. Uh, the recommendations from this review will be reported back to the six integrated joint boards and the NHS Greater Glasgow Clyde in due course. And also a spokesman for Inverclyde Council said the service is wholly reliant on having enough GPs available to cover out of hours and this is proving difficult across the whole of NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde area. A number of proposals will be put to joint boards including Inverclyde's next month for consideration and a preferred option identified. Presenting officer, uh, the issue of the out of hours service is something that is important to both Jackie Bailey's constituents and also to mine. Uh, and the review that's underway is one of the recommendations from the Sir Lewis Richard review. As ever, the Scottish Government will be expecting uh, meaningful engagement with the public to take place. And there have been occasions where this actually this has happened, but also other occasions where it has actually fallen short. And that's also a point I'm sure Ms Bailey and I will agree on as well with some of the, the activities from NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde. Uh, but also I will be looking at all of the recommendations that do come forward and I certainly will be encouraging all of my constituents to do likewise in Greenock and Inverclyde and certainly to make those representations heard loud and clear to not just the integrated joint board but also to the health board and to the wider public because this service is crucial certainly to Jackie Bailey's constituents and also to mine. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I call Maurice Corrie to be followed by Anna Sarwar. Mr Corrie, please. <coughs> Thank you, Deputy Resigning Officer. <clears throat> I'd like to begin by thanking Jackie Bailey uh, for bringing forward this very important debate this afternoon. The future of the Vale and Even Hospital, which I'll concentrate on, because it's very much in my area, is vital to the constituents we both represent in the Dumbarton constituency and also across the wider West Scotland region. So it is right that we have a chance to debate our concerns about the future of the hospital here in Parliament today. The Vale is a central part of life in our area of Scotland, and for many of us, myself included, it is where we remember our children being born, where family members have gone to receive life-saving treatment, and for some it has also been the place where we've had to say our last goodbye to loved ones. That's why every time a reduction in services in the Vale is threatened to be implemented, it is followed by such passionate outcries by the local community and furious debate, because only local people can truly understand how important the Vale is <coughs> to our community. The moving of GP out of our services from the Vale to Paisley is another example of a threat against the hospital, and it would be detrimental to our area. 
asking people in areas like in Dumbarton, Vela Leave, and Helensborough, and Lomond, and including the Rosemeath Peninsula, which Jackie Bader referred to as well, uh, to travel upwards of an hour or more to the Royal Alexander Hospital in Paisley to access emergency primary care service is unfair, and I certainly don't believe it will improve even patient care or indeed their ability to access that care. As Jackie Bailey correctly points out in her motion, the demand for out-of-hours GP services hasn't fallen in the areas I mentioned above, but is actually higher in those areas compared to others. And this isn't an underused service, wasting manpower and resources could be better used elsewhere. But instead, it is a vital need of our residents uh, north of the Clyde in my West, of Scotland, West Scotland region. Alongside the other suggested cuts, removal of services at the Vale in the recent months and years, such as the cuts in the pharmacy services, have been mooted. This in itself, I believe, would have a detrimental effect on the care of patients, as would the suggested closure of the community maternity unit and also the reduction in haematology services at the hospital. Local people have been left questioning whether the Scottish Government and the NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde Board um, <clears throat> truly have the real dedication and commitment that is required to deliver on the promises they made in the vision of the Vale document. The service we are debating today and the others I've also mentioned is a vital part of our local hospital and they are required if a hospital is going to be able to successfully serve its local community just as the Vale of Leven has done for many decades. With the proposed expansion of the Vaseline Naval Base over the coming years, the population in the area will only increase. Service personnel and their families will be moving to the local area and many will be reliant on the services provided by the Vale of Leven Hospital. By getting rid of these services, we are discouraging people from living in our area and coming to settle in our area, which is very important. I welcome the calls and add my own uh, to Cabinet Secretary of Health and Sport about the need for her to intervene in this matter. Uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, in conclusion and summing up, out of our service are not a centralised service. It is a basic service uh, to our communities. Uh, the issue can be understood by local people who rely on the service and see the benefit of the Vale of Leven Hospital. Moving out of our services to Paisley would incur travel times of over an hour plus and obviously the personal costs involved. And young uh, married um, couples who come up to serve in the Navy, the wives may not drive. In the middle of the night they have a panic situation, one of the children, they're faced, there's no cash on the table to have a taxi, we have a problem there. Demand for out-of-service hours uh, has fallen and it is actually higher with Dumbarton and Alexandra residents. And the Scottish Government should be delivering the promises made in the vision of the Vale document and services are needed, to, uh, needed due to the plans to increase the size of HM Naval Base Clyde. And actually we have about 10 referrals per day from that base to the Vale Leaven Hospital. And finally, Deputy Signing Officer, it is vital that the Government steps forward and protects these services and keeps the promises that it made to local residents, patients and NHS, sta NHS staff in the vision for the Vale report. Thank you. Thank you. I call Anna Sarwar to be followed by Ross Greer. Mr Sarwar. Thank you, Deputy Signing Officer. I hope you'll give me permission to first of all start by thanking all staff at the Wishaw General Hospital who have uh, responded very quickly uh, to what is believed to be a bomb threat at the hospital uh, in terms of evacuating and very quickly getting the situation back in control uh, and the patients and staff uh, back to work. So I wanted to put on record my thanks to all our wonderful NHS staff, particularly those working at the Wishaw General Hospital. I uh, can also thank Jackie Bailey for uh, bringing forward this important debate today. Um, uh, it's no secret that Jackie Bailey is a strong defender of the Vale of Leven Hospital and has been a strong advocate for local services in her constituency and has worked closely with local people, including Hospital Watch, to focus on the services there. And I look forward to accepting that invitation and meeting the campaigners from Hospital Watch on Thursday and also put on record my thanks to them for their ongoing commitment to the Vale of Leven, to the staff at the Vale of Leven and to protecting services at the Vale of Leven Hospital. Um, I think it's also important to recognise this debate in the context of the ongoing concern around the maternity services uh, unit at the Vale of Leven Hospital, which is currently under review and has been recommended for closure by Greater Glasgow uh, Health Board. And I hope uh, the Scottish Government take the earliest opportunity to provide clarity uh, to the service users at the Vale that the maternity service will be protected and that will end uh, the uncertainty there. I think it's also important to recognise that this uh, debate and the um, pressure on the out of our service as the result of, of two key factors, one being resource and resource not meeting demand uh, in the NHS, and secondly, and perhaps more concerning, uh, the ongoing workforce crisis that we have in the NHS. Uh, let's not forget that our health boards are being asked to make one billion pounds of cuts over the next uh, four years, and that is directly going to impact on services and direct impact 
uh, on patient care and impact on our staff. And this is perhaps uh, an early indication of what the results uh, of those cuts uh, will be. Secondly, in terms of the workforce crisis, we have seen a mismanagement of the workforce over the last 10 years, where we have seen our NHS staff left uh, overworked, undervalued, under-resourced, and I believe underpaid too. And I think that's a situation that needs to be addressed uh, with urgency. Uh, there's also an ongoing GP crisis. The Royal College of General Practitioners tell us that we are 830 GP short, or projected to be 830 GP short by 2021. Uh, again, this is a concern, particularly around the of our service, and I hope uh, the Minister in response uh, will address the opportunities that will come from the GP contract process uh, to provide more support to general practice. Uh, firstly, in terms of more auxiliary support, so other support services uh, around a GP, for example, a uh, specialist advanced nurse, a physiotherapist, a mental health nurse, etc. Uh, what further support that pharmacies can give to try and take pressures off GP practices uh, and also out of our services, uh, but also what role out of our services will play uh, in terms of the relationship uh, with primary care, because any closures to out of our services will only pile on pressure even more on existing GPs and prior, pile pr more pressure on to our already overstretched uh, a &Es. I also want to thank uh, all those GPs in the local area uh, around the Vale of Leven Hospital who have uh, signed a joint statement uh, saying what they think will be unacceptable clinical risks to patients uh, if this out of hours uh, service proposal goes ahead. I think uh, the Minister must listen very, very carefully uh, to the concerns of general practitioners uh, in the region. Uh, and just in closing, just some um, direct impacts, the loss, loss of a lifeline service, more pressures on GP practices, adding pressures on already existing overpressured GP practices and also surrounding A&Es, the continued centralisation of services, the longer travelling times uh, for people around the Vale of Leven, particularly impacting those people that are from the most deprived communities, the fact that we have poor transport links to other uh, hospitals around the area, the impact that's going to have on wider health inequalities uh, on the area, the further pressure that will put on existing staff in other areas, uh, and also the downward slope in terms of taking services away from the Vale of Leven Hospital that I think will be a huge concern uh, to people around the uh, area of Vale of Leven. I think it's also important to recognise that this is not just the Vale of Leven that's impacted uh, on these changes, but actually those uh, in Greenock, around the Greenock Health Centre, and also service users at Inverclyde with the pressures around the Inverclyde Royal Hospital. So I hope the Minister will take the opportunity to give clarity uh, to the local people and to say that local services will be protected, which was a manifesto commitment, and will instead invest in our NHS and take pressure off our hard-working NHS staff. Thank you, Mr Sauer. I see you eventually localised it. You're a bit general to start with, but you're an astute speaker, and I realised that you had to bring it back to the motion in hand. Um, I compliment you for that. Ross Greer, followed by Brian Whittle. Mr Greer. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I should start by apologising if I have to leave early, as I notified your office in Jackie Bailey last week, an event that I'm hosting has had arrangements changed due to the security issues. Um, I'd also like to thank Jackie Bailey for having uh, tabled this motion and brought it to debate in the Chamber. I know that it's an issue that she quite rightly cares deeply about, and indeed it's an issue that we should all feel strongly about, certainly every representative of the West of Scotland. Access to healthcare in your local area is of vital importance to everyone. That local connection, the accessibility, should not be underestimated. When it comes to primary care services, these should be available in your community from a GP that you know, that you trust. That is exactly what's under threat at the Vale of Leven. Year on year, services have been chipped away. Haematology, pharmacy, and now out of hours, GP services under threat of being cut. Already, out of hours, GP services have been temporarily closed at weekends. Uh, due to staffing shortages. As Jackie Bailey has stated, a report by NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde recommends the withdrawal of out-of-hours GP services on weekdays. Alternative out-of-hours services would involve travelling all the way to Paisley, to the Royal Alexandria, which can be more than an hour away by bus. I do not see how forcing people with a health issue to travel all the way to Paisley will deliver better care. Particularly for those with disabilities or parents with young children, access to healthcare will suffer from restrictions on out of hours GP services. Local residents certainly don't think it will improve the service, and they're its users. We will have on Thursday, as Jackie Bailey mentioned, those who've campaigned to save local services in the Vale of Leven. Hostel Watch have been campaigning for, I believe, 13 years now. They will bring with them a bedsheet signed by thousands of their supporters, some of whom attended the vigil last week. It's to be presented to the Cabinet Secretary for Health to demonstrate the strength of local support. 
particularly for those further north, as Jackie Bailey ha highlighted, those who will be most affected by having to travel further south to Paisley. I hope the Cabinet Secretary will consider the impact this cut would have in people in and around the Vale. After all, the Scottish Government's own independent review in 2015 of, of our primary care services states that these should be person-centred, intelligence-led and fair and accessible for all. Restricting out-of-hours care at Vale of Leaven will not achieve this. It will instead exacerbate health inequalities that are already a serious problem across this country, but particularly in West and Central Scotland. I respect that it is NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde making this, uh, this proposal, but as Anas Sarwar said, they make it in a context, in a financial context. And if the Cabinet Secretary for Health will not step in to protect local services, how many more hospitals will face the same problems as Vale of Leaven? It is deeply worrying to see staff shortages drive the need to cut back on local health services. The public sector pay cap is now preventing hospitals from getting the professionals and keeping the professionals that they need to deliver health care. As my colleague Alison Johnson said earlier this month, it is clear that public sector pay freeze is negatively impacting staff retention. The NHS in Scotland is facing severe workforce shortages and with the retirement boom on the horizon, pressures on health care are only going to increase. It's imperative that funding in this area does not only increase above the rate of inflation, but that it actually keeps up with demand. Anything less is completely unacceptable. That way we can ensure that services such as out of ours GP services that should be locally accessible remain locally accessible. And that's certainly what we'll be fighting for at the Vale of Leaven. Thank you, I call Brian Whittle, last speak in the open debate. Mr Whittle, please. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and can I uh, bring members' attention to a declaration of interest that I have a daughter working in the NHS. And can I thank Jackie Bailey for bringing this debate to the Chamber this afternoon. It's a debate that has far-reaching implications, not just for the Vale of Leaden Hospital, but also for how this Parliament approaches healthcare needs across Scotland. Firstly, I can completely empathise with the stance that Jackie Bailey and Maurice, Collins, and Maurice Corrie and indeed Stuart McMillan are taking with this mo motion. Protecting local services within their own area and supporting the constituents is entirely right. And I know this subject of the proposed changes at the Vale of Leaven Hospital and the ongoing review is one that has been raised often in this chamber and I have spoken in a debate on this subject before. My position is, as it was then, that it is unsustainable position to have a blanket policy which states that no services can change or move ad infinitum. And it's still my view and, with the, view of the, uh, and the view of the Scottish Conservatives, however, that a significant change in the services provided within a community should be brought to the Cabinet Secretary's office and that decision should rest with them. We have a rapidly changing health need and we are, which we are struggling to keep up with. With reference to the Vale of Leaven, as with other similar situation, I would suggest that we need, a, need to consider community services in the round and not through a narrow prism. It is time we consider the long-term future of hospitals and how they fit into the package of community care. Should there be places for acute services such as A&E and neonatal units with once-in-a-lifetime treatments and operations such as hip replacements in area hospitals where specialists are working? Primary care within the Vale of Leaven is the subject of this motion, however. I would ask that other provisions are available outside the hospital to complement or supplement the specific needs highlighted. The truth is, there are others in this chamber who know better than me. However, investment in primary care is absolutely essential if we are to have a sustainable NHS service. The Scottish Conservatives have called for the increased funding to be invested directly with GPs to help alleviate the very issue this motion highlights. And can I suggest the RCGP uh, have said that 7.2% of the healthcare budget is currently spent in general practice in Scotland. And this is less than in the rest of the United Kingdom. And even then, throughout the United Kingdom, I'd also suggest that that is not enough at all. We have to make primary care an attractive proposition for doctors, not only as good career option when graduating from medical school, but also as a, a working lifetime option. GPs, more than any other healthcare professional, can build up a trusting a knowledgeable relationship in communities over years of service to those communities. Continuity of care is an essential element to the effectiveness of our frontline NHS staff. And in Jackie Bailey's motion, she highlights that this is sadly lacking. Whether this is through poor workforce planning and has often been discussed and debated in this chamber, or the lack of GP training and recruitment, or even the general running down of the services in the Vale of Leaven, I am not uh, able to say. 
Although investment in primary care is supposed to alleviate pressures on hospital and hospitals, in this case we have a primary care delivery from a secondary care site. However, what is clear is that there is a breakdown in the GP services that the hospital is able to provide, which has to be to the detriment of patients requiring out-of-hours care. Deputy Presiding Officer, I haven't supported this mo motion mainly due to a lack of knowledge in this particular case. However, I can certainly support the overarching issues in lack of proper investment in primary care, specifically GPs, lack of cohesive workforce planning and lack of long-term planning for our NHS services. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Whittle. And I call on uh, Aileen Campbell to close for the Government. Minister, seven minutes or thereabouts, please. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, and I too echo the words uh, that Anna Sarwar said at the beginning of his uh, uh, remarks around the staff response to the incident at Wishaw General. Wishaw, of course, being one of the hospitals that services my constituency, where I had my two uh, children, and certainly uh, commend the, uh, the dedication of the staff that work uh, there on our behalf. Um, Again, uh, thank, like others, thank Jackie Bailey for uh, raising this uh, motion. Uh, let me first, though, by, begin by setting the scene nationally for out-of-hours provision in Scotland before to returning to the points raised by Jackie Bailey and others through this debate. Daytime general practice and GP out-of-hours services across the country, like those in Glasgow and at the Vale of Leaven Hospital, are facing uh, challenges, including uh, increasing demand for services. And that's why in February 2015, the Scottish Government commissioned Professor Sir Lewis Ritchie to undertake a review of GP out-of-hours services. And it was commissioned precisely because we recognise the importance of primary care as the first point of contact in health care. And this should also be the case during out-of-hours services. His report, Pulling Together, Transforming Urgent Care for the People of Scotland, published in November 2015, made 28 specific recommendations focusing on the delivery of a model of care that is GP-led with a multidisciplinary team working together at urgent care uh, resource hubs across Scotland. Sir Lewis's report received full cross-party parliamentary support as well as broad consensus for its key recommendations from key professional groups such as the uh, SGPC, the BMA, the RCN, pharmacy services, GP out of our services, NHS board chief executives and patient representatives. Crucially, the report recognised that delivering this new model would take time, however, and would require transformational change across the health and social care landscape. And that is a journey that has begun. In 2016, we asked IJBs to work with their delivery partners to set out how they will deliver the report's recommendations locally. We provided £10 million of funding in 2016-17 and will provide a further £10 million in the current financial year to support this work. And as part of ongoing peer review process, Sir Lewis Ritchie has recently led a national engagement programme in each IJB area, bringing together key stakeholders, including staff and the public, to discuss progress. And we're now starting to see a number of areas progress, but as I mentioned earlier, it will take time to embed transformational change of this nature. And that review taking place in Glasgow has been carried out in line with Sir Lewis Ritchie's report recommendations. And I should make it clear that it is being led by Glasgow City Health and Social Care Partnership on behalf of the six Greater Glasgow and Clyde Integration Authorities. The IJBs are in the initial stages of exploring options for the service as a whole across Greater Glasgow and Clyde. And we should also be clear that these are only options at the moment and that no decision has been made and will not be made until wider consultation is concluded. And we've been assured by the IJB that they will now be undertaking extensive engagement with the local community to help them shape a service which meets the needs of the local communities and is safe and sustainable both in terms of human resources but also financially. And we would expect nothing less than meaningful and robust engagement. The IJB will be organising a number of half-day events in the first instance, the first of which is to take place by the end of June this year. And that is why the point that Stuart McMillan raised in his remarks is so important. MSPs should actively seek to use the opportunities presented in this consultation process to ensure that the IJBs, the health boards, know exactly what the local challenges are. Jackie Bailey... Yeah, I was just going to, well, I just going to say, Jackie Bailey, though, raised legitimate points about car usage. She raised legitimate points about public transport. And likewise, Ross Greer uh, made and raised legitimate issues around barriers faced by those facing disabilities. 
and the important decisions uh, and the impact that those decisions can have on our most vulnerable groups in our society if they are not adequately engaged with. And I know Jackie Bailey will continue to engage in this consultation process. Jackie Bailey. I am encouraged by the Minister's comments on consultation, but does she share my concern that local GPs who are responsible for delivering the service weren't consulted and one indeed found out from Facebook? Minister. I certainly would uh, expect the IGBs and the board to make sure that GPs are adequately uh, given the opportunity to feed in with their specialist knowledge, their uh, in-depth knowledge of the communities that they serve into this process, and we would be actively seeking uh, uh, the consultation process to engage with GPs and to make sure that they get their opportunity to feed in uh, to the options uh, consultation. Um, services, though, do require to develop, uh, to, to provide a quality and safe service to patients. And as this is the case across the country, the number of GPs willing to work in out hours periods is challenging. And we need to work through those challenges to ensure the right complement of staff and professionals are able to give the support to the people uh, that need it when they need it. Because patient safety cannot be compromised. And the onset of illness and the need for services does not recognise uh, the clock. Um, so we are taking action to deal with the challenges of GP recruitment, which is not an issue that has solely been felt in Scotland. Um, our manifesto made clear that we are committed to increasing the numbers of GPs working in Scotland. Last year, we increased the number of general practice training places in Scotland by a third. And for the first time, we made a recruitment bonus of 20,000 available to attract trainees to, in traditionally harder to fill uh, posts. However, much measures such as these are on, only go so far in helping to increase GP numbers in the out of hour service. And this is another reason why we published the National Out of Hours Report in November 2015. Because as many other members have raised, this is around workforce uh, development issues as well. And that's why 11 out of the 28 recommendations related to workforce issues. The recommendations cover the specific future contribution of not only the GP workforce, but also importantly, the nursing, pharmaceutical, paramedic and other allied health professionals and other services workforces. And the current out of hours review being undertaken across Glasgow is taking all of these workforce recommendations into account. For example, pilots are taking place to deploy advanced nurse practitioners in home visits. So with all this in mind and in order to stabilise the services, the IJBs are required to explore options to deliver a sustainable and safe model of care. And as I said before, patient safety cannot be compromised. However, the continued provision of out-of-hours primary care services across the Clyde area, including uh, the Vale, is a key priority for this government because we want high quality out-of-hours services which fully meet patient needs. And that's why we're investing 20 million over two years into delivering the report's recommendations to create a multidisciplinary team approach, utilising the skills of a range of highly trained professionals in the NHS and ensuring that patients are seen by the person best able to address their needs. Now, there were many other points, uh, presiding officer, that were raised. However, I think this debate is of uh, such importance that I don't want to descend into some of the political point scoring that often happens in these debates, such as trading blows around who said what in manifestos. I could say that we had much more uh, willing to invest in the NHS to support our uh, NHS than the other parties here. And I could also say that it was our party, it was our party that decided to end the uncertainty uh, to the veil and leave and despite the previous administration uh, being the one that shut their A&E. However, this is of such importance, presiding officer, that I think what we want to do and what we should do and unite as a parliament is to make sure that we can uh, support uh, our uh, NHS staff, support the GPs, support the process of consultation to make sure at the end of it that what we have is a sustainable service that meets the needs of people that we all care about, those that are most vulnerable, most, most furthest away from some of these consultation exercises and make sure that they can adequately shape the service uh, delivery uh, of the NHS in their area. Thank you very much. That concludes the debate and I close this meeting of Parliament. <laughs>